If you ever played RimWorld and wonder what the most useless pawn looks like, maybe it's having a twig for a leg, maybe it's having useless or counterproductive traits, maybe it's having no skills, maybe it's having terrible genes, or maybe it's having all of them carefully combined into a useless genetic mess. Can I actually beat the game with a pawn like this? I could just do that, but then I could just imprison a normal pawn, recruit them, and just have a normal playthrough. So we gotta set some rules in place first. Before anyone comments, me, 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 those aren't the worst genes. I didn't choose these genes because they only slow down gameplay and just give me more footage to edit. And I didn't choose these genes because it would make the challenge almost impossible without ungodly RNG. For anyone interested in playing along, this is what our ideology and map look like. They're not the worst map spot and ideology, but I think there's already enough against me in this playthrough. So with the rules in place and no further purpose in life, let's get into the video. All right, let's look at our surroundings. There's a few hives on the map, but they shouldn't be a problem, right? And since they all suck at everything, I can just give them all jobs, since it doesn't really matter anyway. Now, I was going to narrate the entire video like this, but I realized that after the 21st attempt at talking to a non-existent audience kinda drives you insane. Instead, I chose to narrate the remainder of the video like this. Anyway, the first day we had to get the wall up ASAP, since raids are gonna start appearing soon. We finished the wall just in time. As by nightfall, the first raid had arrived, which luckily was quickly dealt with by the bugs. This is actually pretty convenient for us, as by nightfall, we sneak over to the bugs while they are asleep to quickly grab some insect jelly and a few corpses. This method will sustain us for a little while longer, but we need to start growing our own food right now. While half of our colony is planting the rice, I assign the other half to start construction on the base. I decide to build over steam geyser because it will save on wood cost. Despite poor construction, we still finish the base without any issues. Right after finishing the base, I decide to go for another jelly heist. I didn't realize it was not nighttime since there was an eclipse, which got Bub in a sticky situation. I quickly send out Gibby on a rescue mission, in which he barely escapes. Luckily. He makes it out unharmed and instantly starts bandaging up Bub. After a few days, the early game royalty quest thingy pops up. At first, I assigned the honor to a random pawn since I thought they couldn't use psi powers anyway, because they're all psychically deaf. However, this quest is still useful for us, as I will explain later. Anyway, before that, I make the quest guy violently rip a bunny apart with his bare hands, but before sending him back, I will use his crafting skill 4 to make us 3 bows. Right now, the honor is useless to us. But these bows are massive, because they enable us to start hunting for animals instead of only relying on insect jelly and random corpses. We immediately start hunting down the animals that are trapped behind our wall before they start breaking the wall with a way to hunt food. And our first rice harvest coming in. Our colonists finally aren't terrorized by the fear of hunger anymore. Sadly, they won't sleep undisturbed tonight. At first, the raider kills an innocent mouse and runs over to our wall to ignite it. Which didn't do a lot and is extinguished within a second, but I can't respect the attempt in giving me a small heart attack. After which, the raider decides his life is pointless and runs straight into the bug nest. The bugs have been our savior for so far, but we have to start thinking about our own defenses. But first, I get distracted by a transport pod crash. The colonist has some skills that might be useful, and since we're not starving anymore, it might be a smart idea to start expanding our amount of colonists. A few days later, Randy gave us a Mad Hair and Mad Mare event. Even though this event is not important at all, it sounded funny, so I put it in the video. To give you an example of how shitty our mood is, this is basically what every day looks like. Luckily, because our pawns are absolute trash, I can instantly knock them down and get a plus 40 mood buff. Also, because there is a prisoner now, we sometimes get the jailbreaker mental break. Now, I didn't realize this at the time, but our prisoner cannot escape, since there is no prison to escape from. Randy suddenly woke up and decided to start a heat wave. Now at first I didn't take this serious until I remembered that our pawns have the same heat resistance as the average Scandinavian and will die when temperatures rise above 25 degrees Celsius. There was another raid which, again, was dealt with by the hives. The bugs killing small raids have probably stopped giving you dopamine by this point, so I won't bother you with them anymore. Out of nowhere, another draw pot lands outside our base that contains a pawn with okay stats. 
she instantly decides to join on her own, which in my opinion is a pretty nice free pawn. Personally, I would hesitate to join a group that has genetically modifying me into a useless abomination on the requirement list. Whatever, since I have no fans, I will just keep up with the silly names and call her Gloop. Welcome to the colony, Gloop. More pawns call for expansion. Idle pawns have been cutting stone blocks in the background. A refugee quest pops up. This is a great opportunity for a new pawn. One pawn has decent mining skill, which we desperately need. He's easily caught after collapsing due to heatstroke from our sauna. I don't think his friend is gonna be a problem. I decided to expand our outer wall a bit to safely chop down some more trees. Because our prisoner collapsed due to his psychite dependency, I choose to implant him with our genes. However, I thought the waster genes were xenogenes and not baseline, so now we have a colonist with psychite dependency. <sighs> Whatever. I'll just implant the other prisoner as well. I also send out a small caravan to buy us a small stockpile of psychite tea. Our other colonists might be able to drink that in emergencies as well. As Gibby almost gets struck by lightning while picking up rice, our newest recruit decides to join our colony. Believe me when I say they take a really long time to recruit without any social. Anyway, I will call him Nibble. While Bub finishes construction on our first wind turbine, another prisoner is convinced to join our colony. This is the pawn with the decent mining skill. So we're finally able to mine properly and get vital materials for our progression. Because he used to be a pigskin, I decide to call him Biggie because Piggy felt a little bit too unoriginal. We start construction on our freezer, and because of our awful cooking skill, I place down a nutrient paste dispenser. Another refugee quest pops up, this time with a useful doctor. I decide to capture her. During another toxic fallout, we get two raids. These aren't any ordinary raids because they manage to destroy both hives, which is detrimental to us. So we need to get our defenses up right now if we want to survive. We get yet another refugee quest, which I use to open up the ancient danger on our map. Opening up the cryo sleep caskets, reveal hostile ancients that immediately start attacking the mechs for us. After defeating the last mechs, the ancients decide to give up and leave. All we get from the danger is a bionic leg and a Zeus hammer. Those will be quite useful for us. Since the highs are gone, we immediately start on building our own defenses. One of the refugees turned out to be a genie that is also good at medical. After enslaving him, I use him to install the first bionic leg into Kibble. Together with their improving skills, our colonists are starting to become somewhat capable right now. Our first raid arrives and without the protection from the bugs, we take our position at the kill box. Fortunately, it's a small raid. I decided to build a diagonal melee kill box. This might look cheesy, but believe me when I say that even with this design, we are still barely defeating the raids. It might be a smart idea to start gene harvesting at this point, since getting genes isn't exactly the easiest thing to do. Another small raid. Again, we are barely able to defeat it. Maybe it's a smart idea to start making some actual weapons with our genie slave. These clubs are not going to protect us in the late game. After a few days of nothing, we get our first mechanoid raid. Fortunately for us, there is a trade caravan outside which makes this raid a whole lot easier. I'm so glad I chose to make that kill box, otherwise these raids would have been a whole lot more agonizing. The mechs reminded me that I should start on the mechlane quest to see if I could use the mechanitor. Of course the ship chooses to land right by our pawns mining some silver, injuring our only miner. I think Randy is just trolling me at this point. The mechs are killed by the caravan and our pawns are quickly patched up. For some reason, instead of running away, our slave decides to run straight into her colonist wielding blades while he's unarmed. I blinded one pawn just to make her more useless, but after experimenting a bit, I realized that despite being psychically deaf, a pawn can still use psychic powers when blinded. We can finally start replacing our wooden limbs. Yay! Out of nowhere, a new hive spawns. We don't have a way to deal with this right now, so we'll just ignore it. Hey, maybe this quest will deal. Never mind. Guess we will have to shoot it ourselves before it gets too big. Luckily, there was another caravan at our base ready to defend it. I didn't kill the hive fully and it started to reproduce again. 
but our colonists are not capable to deal with this right now. I don't know what it is with caravans with this playthrough, but they keep showing up at the most efficient times. At least the bugs are dealt with for now. Apparently these were the raids from that quest. They were supposed to deal with the bugs, but since the caravan already took care of that problem for us, we have to fight them on our own. Fortunately, we have another pawn to help us. I kinda made a mistake by assigning the wrong colonist to receive the honor, which also made me realize that I didn't give that colonist and the slave a name. I chose to name her Carpy and I named the slave Floop. More organ donors arrive at the colony, but this time we could also start using them to narrow down our genes, so we won't have as many penalties anymore when reconstructing our new xenotype. Because we are barely winning the raids, I decide to expand our kill box a little bit. Oh look, a good opportunity to test our new kill box. Sadly, half the raiders die before reaching it though. <sighs> well, at least a few made it, and it works just like I wanted it to. This is actually one of the few benefits of being psychically deaf. It's only a disadvantage for the raiders. Not only do we get a lot of caravans, we also get a lot of trading ships for some reason. Now that we have the green skin and cat ears, we can start on engineering us into capable organisms. After using some more volunteers, we finally get the genes we need without any drawbacks and start assembling our main xenotype. This is how most our pawns are gonna look like, a whole lot more useful than they used to be. Gloop will be our first subject to ascend. Since this ideology doesn't block us from implanting other xenogenes, I'm slowly working on also allowing it in our own ideology. I didn't record for the notification to pop up, but another infestation spawned. At first this hive seems really useful, killing all the mechanoid clusters for us. Since I usually always deal with infestations right away, I didn't realize how fast they can expand if you ignore them. Which I did, and a few days later it's giant. This is becoming a big threat to the colony. At least they killed both mechanoid clusters for us. This is also our second toxic fallout this run. I think Randy doesn't want me to win. It seems that after just a few days they have already tripled in numbers and are starting to chip away at our walls. All I can really do at this point is watch as the hive grows and hope for a big raid or a caravan to take them out. I have to think for a moment because there's no way our colonists are able to take this head on. At least the toxic fallout didn't last long. Because the bugs are bleeding, we are in constant danger of them assaulting our base. Oh look, a caravan. Let's hope they leave the way they came from and don't stir up the bugs. Hmm, maybe this raid quest will. What did I say about stirring up the bugs? Bad things happen when you stir up the bugs. Cancel all other plans for now, because the bugs are heading straight towards our base. Although I lit the kill box on fire, some still managed to make it through to our inner layer. That was almost game over. Despite some being injured, we will have to start our assault on the hive right now. Otherwise, they will quickly reproduce back to their original numbers. We start our beer production, because just like in real life, it might be the solution to our bad mood. Learning from my past mistakes, I decide to take the hive head on. The game really likes to throw hives at me for some reason. However, we are somewhat capable to take care of this now. Also, I got the annoying bug where my colonists won't automatically target insects, which almost makes me lose the run. But I managed to exterminate the hive relatively injury free. Like I mentioned before, blind pawns are able to use psi powers, which makes Joy a somewhat useful pawn. I wasn't gonna include this bit in the video, but just look at how awful this throw is by our slave. He lost his leg because of that, but I don't really mind since it will make rebellions easier to deal with. With the special tree, mechs, and psi powers, Joy actually became a really vital pawn of her colony. I intended her being blind as a big handicap, but instead she became one of her most vital fighters. Also, she's now able to use permits. I have two Psylink upgrades hanging around, but I struggle to find them due to my poor storage organization.
after some partying in the background, I finally reached 10 fluid points, which enables me to edit our ideology. The only noticeable thing I did was remove our main Xenotype, which made us able to implant our new improved Xenotype. Not one, not two, but three trade ships. In my 1000 plus hours of RimWorld, I've never seen this happen. To prepare for ship launch, I choose to build mortars just in case we get a siege. This is just to show you the power of a nimble pawn. However, the raider is not nimble enough to dodge bullets. Our first dropout raid. Fortunately, we are now able to deal with it. I use a shock lance just to be safe. I forgot that shock lances only shock a person and don't kill them, so after a little bit the raider gets up again. However, they are instantly killed by our pawns. Since long range mineral scanners are faster, I decide to place a few. It's not long before we find some resources. This is going to be our main way of getting plasteel for the ship. Our first lovers. This is going to help our mood. We start construction on the ship. We already have all the resources to finish it right away. We get a bunch of new lovers because our pawns aren't ugly anymore. I'm doing some rituals in between to increase mood. Damn, slow down a bit. After paying for the location, we get the Persona Core without any issues. We are really close to starting the ship launch at this point. I'll just let this raid play out for you. I think that after defeating that raid, our killbox and pawns are more than capable to start the ship launch. But before that, let's see what these breachers will do to our killbox. It seems like they're getting somewhere. Oh, look at that. How convenient. Better luck next time, I guess. Ooh, that's rough. We just made our first art piece while we are days away from launching the ship. Hopefully it will increase mood a bit, or at least increase the beauty. We're ready to start the ship launch. You're probably tired of hearing my monotone narration that is clearly being read from a script. So instead of narrating every single raid, I'll just show you all the action while I shut up. There's not a lot of action. What can I do to fix that?
I, I mean, we did it. So to answer the question, can you beat RimWorld with the worst pawns possible? I guess that answer is yes. In all seriousness, if you're one of the few people that actually watched the entire video, I would like to thank you. It took me way longer to make than expected. I'll be surprised if this video gets more than 50 views. So unless this video blows up, which I'm not expecting, don't expect another video from me soon. These are more so projects for fun. I'm still experimenting with my content style, and it's one of the first videos I've made in a long time. So if you liked it, be sure to comment down below. I'm not gonna force you to do it, but it would be nice to give me a shout out if you want to try this challenge by yourself and make a video about it. Also, be sure to share the video with someone that might like it, and don't forget to subscribe. Or not, it's really up to you. Anyway, I think that's everything I wanted to say. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm gonna go back into my cave now. Goodbye.